Hey fellow problem solvers, Colfax Math here. Today what we're going to do is an arithmetic reasoning review for the AFOQT exam. The way you do well on exams is you practice. You've got to practice, practice, practice. I'd have a notebook, paper, pencil out in front of you. I would pause the video, do the problem before I do it, unpause the video, watch how I solve it. The more you practice, the better you're going to do. If you need more practice, you could download the app. And you can find this app right here at azab-tutoring.com. It's available both at the Apple App Store and also you could get it on Google Play. Let's get started. Problem number one. There are eight teams. I want to circle and highlight key numbers. Eight teams in a dodgeball tournament. How many different ways can finish first, second, and third? So that means I have three slots right here. How many teams could finish in this first spot? Well, there is a total of eight, so any one of them could finish first. After one of them finishes in first place, no matter which one it is, now there's only seven teams left to finish in second place, and then there's only six teams that could finish in third place. So I have to do eight, and then seven, and then six, and means multiply and then means multiply. So I have to do eight times seven, 56, and then 56 times six, 36, carry the three, 30 plus three, 33. So the number of ways that eight teams could finish first, second, and third is 336 ways. Okay, problem number two, a 45 foot tall electric pole 45 foot tall electric pole casts a shadow 15 feet long. How long is the shadow cast by a nearby 72 foot pole? So I have another pole that's 72 foot long. How long? When you don't know what it is, that means that's X. So these are going to form similar triangles. Ratio of sides are going to be the same. So 45 is to 15. Pole to shadow, pole to shadow is equal to pole to shadow, is equal to 72 over x. All right, so I have the pole to the shadow, pole to the shadow. I could cross multiply right now, that times that is equal to 45x. I think I'm going to reduce my fraction first because it's a no calculator test. So 45 is divisible by 15. 15 will go in here three times. 15 will go in here once. Now when I cross multiply, it's going to be a lot easier. 3x is equal to 72 times 1. Getting x by itself, I have to divide both sides by 3. These 3's cancel. It gives me x by itself. 72 divided by 3. Um, I think I do that in my head. It goes in there 60. Actually, I think I'll just divide it out. 72 divided by 3. 3 goes into 7 twice, giving me 6. 7 minus 6 is 1. Bring down the 2. 3 goes into 12 four times. So if this is 72 feet, this is 24 feet. I can see that proportion as well. This is 3 times as long as a shadow. This is 3 times as long as a shadow. So the key idea here is that similar triangles have the same angles and also the same ratio of sides. So I set those ratio of sides equal to each other. Problem three, how many two and a quarter inch wide boards are needed to cover a floor 15 feet, feet and inches wide? So I got a couple things going on here. My board width is two and a quarter inches and my feet, the actual floor is in feet, so i got to convert to have one unit. First thing I'm going to do is take that 15 feet, one tick mark is for feet, I know that 12 inches equals one foot, 15 times 10 is 150, 15 times 2 is 30, so if I multiply 15 by 12, it's going to give me 180 inches. My, whoops, 180 inches. My feet will cancel, and that'll give me inches. So I have 180 inches. 
And then I know that in that 180 inches, each board is two and a quarter inches. So I have to do 180 divided by two and a quarter inches. So step one was get everything in the same units. Now I'm going to turn this mixed number into an improper fraction. The way I do that is I go two times four, two times the denominator eight, plus the top number nine. So I have 180 divided by nine fourths. Nine fourths and two and a quarter are the same thing. So step one, same unit. Step two, um, change that mixed number to improper fraction. Now step three to divide. The way I divide fractions is I multiply by the reciprocal. So that's the rule. I turn that into multiplication and I flip that over. So that becomes four ninths. And then just like all these no calculator problems, it usually works out to be kind of an easy number. So I have 180 times four over nine. I can multiply across the top, across the bottom, and then divide, or I could cancel first. So I'm gonna cancel first. I know that nine goes into nine one times. Nine goes into 180 20 times. So now I have 20 times four, or 80 inches. No, sorry, no inches. How many times does that go into that? Just gonna go in there 80 times. So I need to buy 80 boards. 80 times two and a quarter is equal to 15 feet. Problem number four, a lot of words here, a lot of stuff to decode. Two automobiles start at the same place and travel along the same path. The first is going 40 miles per hour and the second is going 55 miles per hour. What is the distance? It's an important word here because I'm looking for miles between the two automobiles at the end of five hours. Got my colors over it. So I got this one car going here, 40 miles per hour. I have the second car right here going 55 miles per hour. And then they're going to travel for five hours. One quick way to do that is the difference between 40 and 55 is 15. So this one is making up 15 miles in an hour for five hours. So the answer is going to be 5 times 15 or 75 miles. Another way to do it is say, how many miles does this one go in five hours? Well, if it's 40 miles per hour, I can multiply that by five hours. Hours will cancel, it'll give me 200 miles. Do the same thing here. This one's also going for five hours. And this is miles per hour. Hours cancel, that gives me 275. So at the end of five hours, this one has gone 270 miles, this one 200 miles, the difference 75 miles. Problem number five, if six is 24% of a number, I don't know what that number is, so I'm calling that number X, what is 40% of that same number? So I gotta figure out what X is and then find 40% of X. It's actually kind of a tricky problem. If six is, is is equal sign. So I know something is gonna be equal to six. 24% of a number. So what I'm saying is 24% of a number is six. First thing I'm gonna do is take this percent, convert it into a decimal, I'll go over one, two. So I'm saying 24% is 0.24 of a number. I don't know what that number is, so I'm gonna call it X is six. So if six is 24% of a number. So here's my first equation. That's how I'm going to get X. Then once I have that X, I'm going to find 40% of that X to find my solution. So I got 0.24 times X equals six. I got to get that X, that unknown by itself. I divide both sides by 0.24. These are going to cancel. Now I have X by itself. If I do that to the left side, I have to do it to the right side. So I have six divided by 0.24. I don't think there's an easy way to do that. I think I'm just gonna have to do it this way. Six is divided by 0.24. Six is the same thing as 6.0. I'm 
I'm going to move this decimal over one, two. So I move this decimal over one, two. There are no values there. So zeros go there. So 24 goes into 600. So 24 goes into 60 twice. That's going to give me 48. 60 minus 48 is 12. Bring down the zero, 120. 24 times 5 is 120. So if 6 is 24% of a number, that number is 25. What is 40% of that same number? So what is 40% of 25? So that's the second part of that problem. So I have to do 25 times 40%. I'm going to move this over 1, 2. So 25 times 0.4, that's that 40%, is 20. Carry the 2, 8, 9, 10. I got a decimal place one place over, so I moved the decimal place over. My answer is 10. It's a pretty tricky problem. First part of the trick is really decoding that whole sentence and realizing it's two separate problems. So you got to find the number x by this equation and then 40% of that number to find your solution 10. Problem number six, a stereo can be purchased on the installment plan with a down payment of 35 bucks. So that's a flat fee. We don't want to forget that. So put 35 here, make sure we add that in. And then 15 payments of 2250. There is no sales tax. I wonder where that would be. How much will the stereo cost if purchased on the installment plan? So I got 2250 times 15, right? I got 15 payments of that amount. So I'm going to multiply those together. And then I got my down payment of 35. So multiply those, add that, and that's our number. I got two decimal places over here, so I got to remember that. 5 times 0, 5 times 5, 25, carry the 2. 5 times 2, 10, plus 2, 12, carry the 1. 5 times 2, 10, plus 1, 11. My placeholder, 1 times 0, 1 times 5. Uh-oh, pen's fading out. Hopefully the stereo works better than this. 1 times 0, 1 times 5, 1 times 2, 1 times 2. Then I'm going to add those together, get 0, 5, 7, 3, 3. Decimal places over 1, 2. So I go over 1, 2, and I end up with $337.50. That seems about right, right? 15 times that, maybe 300 bucks plus that. So there's our total amount right there. Problem number seven, a gas can is filled at 320 cubic inches per minute. So that's a rate. The can is 10, 10 inches long. One thing I am noticing, I got to double check units. So it's 10 by 88 inches wide by 12 inches tall. So then it's 12 inches this way, right? So that's going to be the volume. It's all inches, and we're filling up in cubic inches, so our units are good. So we've got to figure out how many cubic inches this is, and then it's going to go 320 inches into this every minute, and then how many minutes will it take? So let's find the volume of this first. I think I'm going to do 88 times 12 first. I could do 10 times 88, that'll be easy.
All right, number problem eight. If you're still with me, good job. Uh, I know it gets tiring doing these practice tests, but the more you practice, the better you're gonna do. If you're new to the channel, think about subscribing and sharing the channel with anybody who might be interested in taking a standardized math exam and improving that score. All right, the total earnings of three newspaper carriers is $7,400. Of the three carriers, individual ratio is 24, 21, 15. What were the earnings of the individual who earned the least? So we want to figure out how much did that person at the ratio of 15, what they earned. So I got to do the full sum of theirs of that 7,400. Then I'm going to come up with how much each little share earns. And then I'm going to take that value and multiply it by 15. So it's a little complex. I got 4 plus 1, 5, and 5 is 10. Carry the 1, 3 plus 2, 5, 6. So the total of those three ratios is 60. And then I got to do 60 in a 7,400, right? So each little part is one little part of 60, right? So I'm going to do 60 in a 7,400. 60 goes in 74 one time. 74 minus 60 is 14. Bring down a zero. 60 and 140 is twice. That gives me 120. Bring down the zero. 60 and a 200 is 3. 180. It's going to give me 20 left over. So I got 123 with a remainder of 20. 20 over 60 is a fraction. That fraction 20 over 60 can be reduced to 2 over 6. Right, I can knock those zeros out. 2 over 6 is 1 third. That, so that could get reduced to 1 third. And then 1 third, I could leave it as a fraction or convert that into dollars and cents because I am talking about dollar amount. One third is the equivalent of 33 cents. So each little share makes $123.33. Right, so this is the sum of all the shares. The person making the most makes 24 123s, the medium person, and then the low person, what we're looking for, makes 15 of those. So I gotta take this 123.33 times 15. 15 times 3 is 15, carry the 1, 15 plus 1, 16, carry the 1, 16, carry the 1, 5 times 2, 10 plus 1, 11, carry the 1, 5 times 1, 5 plus 1, 6. There's my placeholder, then my 1 times 3, 1 times 3, 1 times 3, 1 times 2, 1 times 1. I add these together to get 5. 9, 9, 4, 8, and 1. I have 1, 2, decimal places over, 1, 2. See if this even makes some sense. The three people together make 7 grand, 7,400. The least earner at a ratio of 15 to 21 to 24 makes $1,849.95. Okay, problem number nine. The cost of a movie ticket is $13.50. It is on sale for 60% off. What is the cost of the ticket now? So 60% from 100% is 40%. So the cost is going to be right now is 40% of 1350. I'm going to take, I think of this as an arrow and I move the decimal over one, two to get 0.4. So I'm going to take 1350 times 40% right there, and that's going to be the cost of the ticket. I could do the 60% and then subtract it from there, or I could just go straight to there. These are all zeros. Placeholder, 4 times 0. 4 times 5 is 20. Carry the 2, 4 times 3, 12, 13, 14. Carry the 1, 4 and 1 is 5. Add that together, zero, zero, zero. Adding down four, five. I have one, two, 
three, four decimal places over. So I go over one, two, three, four, and I get $5.40. Just the ballpark, I'm expecting it to be less than half of that, right? It's 60% off, so less than half of that. It's a quick check, $5.40 is your correct answer right there. That's the deal for a movie today. All right, problem number 10, staying strong, let's keep going. If two cans of soup are 32 cents, so two cans are 32 cents. So of these two cans, they are 32 divided by two, they are 16 each. And a dozen cans, 12 cans, are a buck 68. That's a deal. What is the savings per can purchased? So I gotta figure out the difference between this scenario and that scenario. So I'm gonna do it price per can. So I'm gonna take a buck 68, divide that by 12. 12 goes into 16 one time. Six minus two is four. Bring down the eight, 12 goes into 48 four times. Decimal place goes straight up here. First case scenario, two cans for 32 cents, 16 cents per can or 14 cents per can. In the second scenario, what is the savings per can? So the difference between 16 and 14 is two cents per can. Number 11, on Monday, the water was shut off three times for a quarter hour, two thirds of an hour, and 13 fourths of an hour. Kind of funny way to refer to that. Probably was supposed to be one and three fourths, but we'll call it 13 fourths. Never mind the fact your water got shut off three times. I had an apartment like that once. All right, so I got to add all three of these up to get the total time the water was shut off. So I got to add those three together. So I have one quarter plus two thirds plus 13 fourths. The way I add or subtract fractions is common denominator. The number that four and three are gonna go into is 12. So to get this to be a 12, I have to multiply it by a three. But I can't multiply it by a three because it's gonna change the value of it. So I multiply it by a three over three. This thing is equal to one. That gives me three twelfths, an equivalent fraction of one quarter but with that denominator of 12. This one, I gotta multiply by four over four to get that 12. So that's gonna give me eight twelfths. And then this last fraction, I multiply by three over three to get 39 twelfths. Now that I have that common denominator, I add across the top and keep that common denominator Three plus eight, 11. 39 and 11 is 50 over that common denominator of 12. We are talking about time, so it'd be weird to call it 50 twelfths of an hour. So I'm gonna do 12 into 50. 12 goes into 50 four times. Four times 12, 48. 50 minus 48 is two. Bring down a zero after a decimal place. 12 goes into 20 one time. 20 minus 12 is eight. Bring down the zero six, six times. So a Problem number 12, what is the reduced price of a $60 raincoat after it is discounted 10% a new price and then 10% a new price and then 30%? So it's a little bit of a trick. You certainly can't just take 50%, the sum of those percents, and take it off of here because the 10% is off of the new price. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take 100 minus 10 to get 90. So 10% off, 
I'm going to take that $60, multiply it by 90 to get $54. Or 10% off would be $6 off. 60 minus 6 gives me the same 54. Then I got another 10% off, off of this price. So again, I'm going to do 100% minus 10% to get 90%. Multiply this by that 90% to get the new price. 36, carry the 3. 45 plus 3, 48. Decimal place is one place over to get 4860. So first I get 10% off to get $54. Another 10% off to get $48.60. Now I get another 30% off. So I'm going to multiply it by 1 minus 30 by the 70%. So I'm going to take that 4860 and multiply it by 0.7, or 70%. 7 times 6, 42. Carry the 4, 56, plus 4, 60. Carry the 6, 28, plus 6, 34. Uh-oh, pen's giving me trouble here. What was that? 42, carry the 4, 56, 60. There we go. Decimal place is over 1 over 2, so I go over 1, 2, and I get $34 and 2 cents. See if that's a reasonable answer, right? If it was 50% off the whole thing, it would be 30 bucks, but it's not. So once I subtract 10 and then 10 and then 30, I end at $34 and 2 cents. Problem number 13, how long will it take to earn $600 in interest if you invest 2,500 bucks at 6%, well, let's change this right off the bat from 6% to 0.06. Think of this thing as an arrow shooting it over one, two places, 0.06. We need to know this equation. Interest is equal to principal times rate times time. I think of it as PERT. But for a test, you need to know that, but this is actually one of the most important equations for financial well-being as well, so it's a good thing to know. So this is your interest. This is how much money you got to start with. This is your rate, and this is number of years if it gets compounded annually. How long will it take to earn 600 in interest? So that 600 goes right in there. How long will it take to make 600 in interest? If my principal is 2,500, so I take that 2,500, then I'm going to multiply it by my rate, 0.06, and then I'm going to multiply it by my time, t. I don't know what that is, and that's the question. How long will it take? So how many years to make $600 in interest at 6% on 2,500? First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply these two together, 2,500 times 0 0.06 is 0, 0, 30. Carry the 3, 12 plus 3, 15. Placeholder, these are all zeros. Add that up. And then I got my decimal place over 1, 2. So I go over 1, 2, and I get 150. So this right here is 150. So I have 600 is equal to 150t time. I get time by itself. So I divide both sides by 150. Those cancel. Gives me t by itself. 600 divided by 150. Well, I can knock these zeros off. 60 divided by 15 is 4. So it's going to take me four years at 6% with 2,500 bucks to make 600 in interest. Fair bit of interest but it's good interest rate. Problem number 14, aviation gasoline weighs 45 pounds per cubic feet and six pounds per
give me 42. 45 minus 42 is 3. Bring down the 0. 6 goes into 35 times. So I'm going to end up with 75 gallons of fuel. And that's what I've been asked to figure out. 75 gallons times 6 pounds per gallon is going to give me that 450 pounds. It's kind of a complex one because we've got so many units here. Correct answer is the 75. All right, last problem, problem number 15. A plumber charges $45 for a service call plus $25 per hour. So $25 per hour plus a flat fee of $45. He works at a customer's house. If he conducts a service call and takes three hours, what will be the customer's bill? Paid 120 bucks. For that service call. All right, there it is. Hopefully you did well on that practice exam. Said it a lot, but the more you practice, the better you get. You can find more practice at this app right here. Download it on your phone or your home computer. Keep working at it. The more you do, the better you get. Thank you for watching.